Dr. Hurt, would you open in prayer for us, please? Sure. Let's and pray. Then we begin. Lord, thank you for bringing us together for the start of a, uh, of a journey uh, and uh, in, uh, in an opportunity to explore what you're going to uh, seek for us to do. Lord, we, uh, we ask that uh, through our interaction with each other, through the, uh, through the research that we do, through the writing and, uh, and, and labor that we put into our, our projects and assignments, um, Lord, we, we ask that, uh, that you would, that, that you would uh, uh, lead us to, to the calling that you have for us so that, uh, so that we, we can bear fruit for you. And that, uh, and that the projects that we work on are are imbued with this uh, with this idea of uh, of the calling that uh, you've put before us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doctor Hurt. Uh, Liu has been a great support and help with the master's program, and for those of you who will do subjects that originate in the master's program, chances are you're going to be seeing Dr. Hurt a lot. I, I can tell you that you have a most patient and caring professor in Dr. Hurt, and it is good that we have the privilege of having joining us here as well today. I sent an agenda out, but I'm going to share my screen and bring that agenda to the fore as well so that we can um, look at it as we address the issues that we plan to today. So let me just do that very quickly. And it begins with welcome and introduction in an effort to um, utilize the time we had while we were waiting, I basically made fun of the introduction of each other. But I think more importantly at this time, I would want to ask those of us present to introduce ourselves and uh, what if we just speak of a hobby in that introduction? I find that very often as we we talk about um, ourselves outside of our, just our professional role, we find that we have so much in common. A hobby, something that gives you joy, um, your expectation from this course, any of those things will be wonderful and useful to us as you introduce yourself. Now, Nathan, on my screen, you are at the top. So I'm going to begin with you, and we move down to Damaris, and then we go down. Okay. Uh, my name's Nathan Haytag. Actually, Dave in this chat is my father, um, one who actually encouraged me to look into BGU. Um, so this is my second class with BGU. Um, I did the Theology of Work class um, in the spring. Uh, I live in Cambridge, Wisconsin, which is... Uh, if you know where the capital of Wisconsin is, it's about 30 minutes east of there. Um, I live with my wife. Um, a hobby, it gives me a lot of joy. Um, I play a lot of Frisbee golf. So I've been playing for quite a few years, actually, since middle school. It was the first time my dad and I played and my brothers. So I play tournaments. I used to play in a team when I was in college. So that's one of my main hobbies, what I really do. It gives me a lot of joy. So... Was there anything else you wanted us to mention? I'm going to leave it totally up to you. What are okay. you expecting from this course, though, Nathan? Um, personal assessment. Yeah, I, I'm looking to learn more about myself. Um, I mean, my, my dad's given me some information as to what this course is kind of be, going to be about. Um, and it sounded really interesting to me. Because um, I, I feel after taking the theology of work class that I kind of have an idea what as to what I feel God has called me into, um, but I'm really interested to see through this class kind of what qualities and traits we can identify in my personality um, to really kind of affirm that is is teaching because I'm a teacher. I teach woodworking construction, um, 
at a high school in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's my calling. I really feel like God's prepared me and put me in an amazing place like that. Um, but that's kind of what I'm looking for out of this class. Okay, are we going to go to our new student on the block? Yes, I'm Damaris. I am originally from Puerto Rico. I, this is my first class at BGU, but actually my husband was a student. He graduated from the Mass program in 2015, so I'm, I'm familiar to BGU. I've been considering beginning my studies, but it took me a few years to make the final decision. So I finally made it and here I am. I am living in Dallas, Texas right now with Miguel. I have two sons. Uh, one lives in Florida and the other one lives in Dallas. So it's the first time that Miguel and I are by ourselves now. So this is a new experience for us. I am. In this class, I just want to get back to the mood of being a student again. I want to get ready for the next stage in my life. Our ministry has been for the Latin American nations. We have been pastors, Miguel and I have been pastors of Spanish speaking churches here in the United States. But we're getting ready for a new stage in our ministry. And I decided that I needed this program to get prepared. So I hope that this class will, will get me back to the basis, to my gifts, uh, my calling, so I can be clear and I know where I'm, where I'm going. Uh, thank you, Damaris. We do remember Miguel. And we know that you are going to be. Um, pampered and helped through this program and we're all here to see you through too we would want to hear from reverend noel you will need to unmute noel yes so once again good night to everyone and um, please do not allow the reverend before the name to, to create any barrier. Um, I'm not too sure why it got up there, but it's there. Um, I am Noel Holder and I'm from Guyana, South America, close to the Caribbean, where Professor Mackenzie is from. Um, I am um, married and have quite a lot of children. <laughs> and I know you will smile, got about um, seven children. We only have about three of them home with us now. The rest are married on, or migrated. And um, I do a number of things as it pertains to my work. I am head of my church, I'm the moderator. I am also head of department in the public health department at the University of Guyana. My second was a degree in public health, so that's my speciality. And I think that I am positioned where I have students of all ethnicity and ages that I um, interact and teach on a daily basis. And that position there where God has positioned me, I think I can be in a better place to utilize um, the knowledge that I am gaining and that I have gained so far from doing um, prior course, two prior courses, overture and one course. And I think that um, God want to use me um, in that space um, within the communities that I, I, I find myself. Um, so that's it. I'm hoping to get this knowledge where the the assessment, it's called personal assessment. Um, my gift, what is my gift? Um, what is it that I have that I don't know that um, can be identified? And how can I use it for not my benefit, but to benefit um, those to whom I come into contact with? So those few words I want to say in this introductory um, remark. Thank you, Noel. Andrew, 
I got to know something else just moments ago. I heard uh, of the, the woodcraft connection. So <laughs> I, 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 I want now for you to, to, to fill in all the blanks. Well, my name's Andrew Campbell. I was born in South Africa. And I came to the U.S. in uh, 1994 and uh, never left. Um, I <clears throat> was involved in youth ministry for about 15 years, mostly adventure ministry. So I was a mountain guide and whitewater and rock climbing and all that fun stuff, taking kids up the mountains and backpacking. And um, <clears throat> I quit doing that in 2000 and started my woodworking business, discovered that that was really what I was made for. So that's what I've been doing for the last 18 years, raising a family. I have three sons, uh, Kelvin, Sky, and Tim. My oldest son is 19, and he is studying graphic design at Western Washington University. And my middle son is uh, just finished up his... Oh, he'll be a senior next year. My youngest son just finished his freshman year. So, um, I am a single dad now, as of last week. And uh, yeah, my life is in a major transitional phase. A couple more years and I won't have kids at home anymore. So one of the reasons why I um, decided to do the master's at is Dave Hey, tag talked me into it. <laughs> you know, the more I the more I go down this road, the the more glad I am that he did. Um, I feel like I have a lot of raw materials inside of me that need to be organized into something useful. And since I'm in a place where where I have the opportunity to start exploring that, um, that's what I want to do. So I'm hoping that this class will help with that and give me some direction for what I want to do with this master's program. What else you want to know? <laughs> I, build, I build stuff all the time. I, don't help it. I know you're going to be telling us a lot more sure as we move into the class together. We, 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 we explore and we, we, we discover. Yeah. So, Dr. Hurt? Well, I'm Leroy Hurt. Uh, I live in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama with my wife, Kathy, and I currently work at the University of Alabama uh, as an associate dean, uh, so I'm a, basically an administrator. Um, I'm delighted to be part of this course. The uh, uh, one of the interesting things is that my role at the university uh, it involves dealing with uh, programs that cater to working adults. Uh, so it's not the traditional 18 to 22 year old student in U.S. Uh, colleges. It's it's the working adults, the the ones who are professionals who are already underway on their career, just like you all, uh, and uh, and who want to better themselves. Uh, and, and the reason why that's, that's important, and it, it has a very, uh, very interesting connection to this course, is that uh, as I've gone around the state, and in fact around the, the southeast of the U.S., and I'm sure it's not much different anywhere else in the U.S., uh, every single employer that I talk with and every single uh, leader in, a, in the state tells me that uh, – that the, the workforce is the most critical issue uh, for them. It's what keeps them up at night. And, and within that, it's, it's not just skill development, but it, it's things like work ethic and, uh, and it's things like the soft skills. And that's, again, that's every single employer. I have not met an employer who, you know, for whom that is not the number one issue in their minds. And uh, to me, this course is important because, because um, I think uh, a strong sense of calling is, uh, is one of the factors that, uh, that helps people 
uh, to develop a strong work ethic, to, uh, to, to improve their skills, and to, uh, and to achieve in the workplace. And so from, from you all, um, I, I hope to learn you know, how, how, to, uh, how that gets imparted to people. Uh, because that's the sort of thing that I'll be taking to working adults uh, in my my regular life, and and, uh, and what I'm hoping is that uh, as I interact with you all, uh, uh, we can we can uh, uh, flavor. I, I I'll be able to flavor all of that work in my secular job with with a bit of uh, of the gospel. Uh, in terms of hobbies. My my big hobby is grading papers for Bakke Graduate University. <laughs> um, but uh, when uh, when when I'm not doing that, uh, I, I try to exercise. My wife and I travel quite a bit now, uh, especially we have a grandchild in the Pacific Northwest, and and our kids are are uh, in states other than Alabama, so we we travel to visit uh, relatives, uh, and uh, and also we travel up to Chicago as well. So that, uh, that takes up quite a bit of time uh, for that. So I'm delighted to be here and to be working with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hurt. Uh, I thought I saw another student jump in. I'm, I'm, I'm missing him now. I wonder if he fell and may rejoin us because he's from Ghana. Sometimes we do have all these bits of um, challenges with the network. So let me go on to Kurt. Kurt, you're here with us for the first time. You've begun to hear what we talk about and what we do. I want to first of all thank you. I know you were in transit and you took the time to come on in. And I'm very happy that you joined us, but talk to us. Well, I'm supposed to tell you what my hobby is. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, when I give a professional resume or speaking and they ask what my hobby, I say, well, my hobby is being a professor. Okay. And I said, that's what I like to do for fun. Uh, in this context, uh, you know, as a business, I'm an entrepreneur. And so I help get things going. I help consult with other business besides just doing my own. Uh, but I suppose as a hobby, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and my wife and I love to go camping and both in a trailer or backpacking. And I love playing guitar. So very quickly, those are some things about me. Thank you. And I, and I have a feeling you don't want to say anything else about you right now. <laughs> I, I can it. talk for a very long time. I'm just. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go on to Dave. Dave, uh, what will you tell us this time? Don't tell us every, too much because you're going to come on and tell us again, just like Kurt will. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I, I live in Wisconsin. I run a uh, gear manufacturing business, family run, second generation owner. I was in youth ministry uh, many, many, 30 years ago and uh, found myself called to manufacturing and started with BGU in 2010 because I had reached a, a point where I was again questioning God, what's the next step? And BGU has just been so instrumental out of BGU. I, I, I graduated in the DTL, developed a, uh, a course for high school students to explore their gifting and calling and work on the soft skills like Leroy had mentioned. And it's been such a, a transformative experience for me to be a, to be a student with BGU that uh, when I was asked to be a board member and, and associate professor at times, I, I'm more than willing uh, and gladly uh, to join in because I one I learned so much from other students, but two, uh, if I can assist anybody else in their journey, that's one of the, the greatest joys that I can have. Uh, hobbies are are fairly diverse. Uh, I I like to garden. Uh, I have bees. I like to beekeep. Uh, I like to cut wood and hunt 
And this weekend, uh, Andrew and a couple other buddies from around the country are, are going to build a cabin together. Uh, so I'm going to put their woodworking skills to use. Uh, uh, thank you, Dave. Thank yeah. you. I guess it's now my time, right? Correct. And <laughs> what's interesting is that I, I like to spend quite a bit of time on introduction in personal assessment because having walked with maybe over 130 or so students through this course for a long time, I recognize that this is a course where we discover how much we are the same, how much we yearn to do the same things, and how much we all have an undying love to please God. And when we, when we share to the point of vulnerability, we find that we're built by each other. And so my one prayer for this course is that we would be open sufficiently to receive. I am Yvonne McKenzie and I live in Jamaica. And like Andrew, I sit in the same place of aloneness. Like Dave, I do be and bottle honey as part of my company. I am an avid gardener and I am an artist in the sense that I do needlework. And I do needle art for professional purposes and I'm dying to get some time to do an exhibition. That's probably the one last thing that I'd like to do because that's the creative bit. Now, my son broke my guitar and I never mastered it. But um, yesterday I sang again and I thought I'd given up singing and I was discovering that I missed it. Uh, I do event planning, so I would normally say to persons, the only thing I do not provide is the groom and the bride, but I do all the other things as it relates to a wedding, from the making of the cake, from the floral artistry, to providing the venue in my own home and all that. So here am I with these five or 10 talents and came into a personal assessment class and knew that I didn't need to know what my calling was because I had already told the Lord what we were going to do together. And I was busy doing it because I was convinced it was so right. And then I discovered that I needed to name this calling and I needed to understand it. And there were some difficult pre-course survey questions and I needed to do the trajectory of my life, which was extremely disturbing. And yes, I did spend weeks in an emotional turmoil. And I'm not telling you this by accident, I'm introducing you to the course. Through that process, I discovered that my 30 years of banking and my life with BGU, which probably goes back to 2010 to Dave, as I resisted being a student and as I resisted wanting to um, become a professional teacher and that kind of stuff, that all I have been doing is to journey alongside 
the persons who God had placed in my life and to be an encourager and a facilitator and really to pour into them all I got so that they could be better than I was. And once I discovered that, I discovered peace. Total peace. If every day there is someone whose life I have touched who becomes a better Yvonne McKenzie, I know I'm leaving this world a better place than it is today. So that's me, two beautiful grandchildren who are my heart, a son who is bipolar, who has attempted suicide three times and who is still ill, a wonderful daughter who is a fighter. And here we are, we make a family and we, we're thankful, very thankful that I have another opportunity to share with you and have the support of that many of BGU's wonderful hearts that have joined us, who are spending time with us. So welcome to ASM 702, 602, and Toolkit 1 for those who are doing the master's course. Your course description is on your syllabus, and I will bring the syllabus up in a little while, but I will not read that to you. I will simply say that through this journey, you will be taken through some academic exercises that have, over time, allowed those who participate in them honestly to become aware of aspects of their personhood that they would not have probably paid attention to in the past. And what we learn as we come into that is that all of these were as if it were ordained to shape us and to mold us. It was in fact that potter's wheel, our hard times, the high times, the eras we've experienced, all of this combined to shape us and to prepare us for what God has called us to. And why is it important for me to have an understanding of what God would have me do. We are going to have persons speaking to us, authors of various books. We have Bill Hendricks, the person called you. You're going to be reading his book. You're going to be looking at his videos. You're going to have him come in and speak to you. But then we'll help you to understand the dissonance that we may find between what we're doing and what we would love to do and how best to manage that. You will have someone like Rob Martin who is going to be helping you to articulate clearly your vision, to help you to put together what you are seeing and experiencing. You're going to have Dave Etesh who is going to show you how meandering the struggles of expectations, what he ought to, what society tells us we should, and what our heart tells us we're called into. Between that wrestling, we emerge with something that we say, yes, no, I know. And there are those of us like myself who would have completed the course and not be certain because we haven't heard it yet. It's not gotten into our spirit yet, but we are never the same and we know 
that we are on that quest. So this is personal assessment. How is it helpful and why do I need to do this? This sounds like some psychological thing I'm being drawn into. I'm here for a transformational leadership degree. But unless I understand me, then transforming me, which is where transformation begins, can be lost on me. And then my abilities to lead others or to guide others in their transformation processes would also be limited. On the other hand, if you're just beginning your study, you may be asking yourself some questions. This course could well help you or sometimes divert you, change the trajectory altogether as it brings you face to face with what you're doing versus what you ought to be doing versus what you're hearing from your peers and so on about who you are and how you are being used of God. And very often, a great deal of that discovery resides in feedback. And that takes me to the personal learning community, that second item on the pre-course expectations. I am going to invite you to think very carefully about your personal learning community. And before you choose the persons whom you will tell your story and have them give you the feedback, to be very aware of the very many personalities that make up that group. You may well have somebody who sees and is blindfolded to the fact that the only thing you ought to be doing is to become a preacher of the gospel. And they may not hear your story because they're not listening to the other sounds that are coming from it. So you, I'm, I'm inviting you to choose your learning community carefully to ensure that they can be focused on the exercise at hand so that you can benefit from it as much as you need to you do have a pre-course survey which i would have sent to several persons in the early part of the course and i'm discovering that we have some late additions so i will resend the word version and also place it in the classroom i think it is already there but i will double check very important that you you do that survey at least review it as early as possible. You might not, you certainly will not be able to complete it, but it will help you to organize your, your time around what is required of you, the time frame in which it is required, so that when you get to the latter part of the course, you're not scrambling with that. All right? I want to pause there because uh, are there any questions that we may have with regards to the, um, the pre-course survey, the personal learning community? No. Let's talk about expectations. The adult learner is in a unique position because life happens. You're not the person who is getting dressed and give me your lunch bag and in the American culture, maybe gets on the bus or whatever, heads to school, come home. Your focus is education. The adult learner has to do life and do work. And that is challenging. And there are going to be times when 
life takes precedence over work. What we encourage in this group is that we understand that we are in a setting where we become a personal assessment toolkit family. And so notification to your professors of changes that will impact your delivery is important. It's not just an act of respect, but it is also an opportunity for us to pray with you, an opportunity for us to join with you to see you through. I want to feel that our focus is not about passing and failing as much as it is about growing and becoming. And I know you have to show that you have done the work, but I would want no one in this um, class to feel that they're lesser than and that they too do not have a story and an input that will cause all of us to learn and to grow. So basically the expectation is that we expect you to attend the Zoom rooms. That is not just our desire, it is also a requirement of our accreditation that we have this interaction time with you and we would want you to be there. I'd also want you to be there because we learn from our text and we learn from our um, various reading material, journals and discussions, but we learn a whole lot when these valuable experienced persons who have journeyed where we're about to trod shed light on our journey when they come into the Zoom room and tell us their stories and allow us to interact with them. I'm kind of sorry for Nathan and Andrew because you're going to hear Dave again. And I'm sorry for Dave because he's going to try to be creative to say it another way because um, Theology of Work stole him and had him do my ASM presentation in Theology of Work. Nonetheless, there is always a lesson that comes from the thing you've heard once or twice. I can listen to Dave all day, so don't worry. All righty, good, good. I like that. Thank you for that assurance, because I kept saying to myself, I wonder if Andrew would be saying, when will these people bring something new and fresh? So, you know, getting that from you is great. All right. I'm the opposite, though. I grew up with him for 24 years, so you know, I've uh, heard enough of him. <laughs> no, no, you are on a scholarly journey because you will have to make scholarship out of what was just instruction. You better listen well this time, Nathan. <laughs> You're going to have to make scholarship of it, Nathan. This is um, a tough. This is a tough crowd. I I, I feel no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> All right. And, and we haven't had Kurt throw in his bit yet, so it gets interesting. All right. Um, I am going to skip navigating properly because so far I have just one student, and I will do this with you um, rather than go through this uh, on, on the screen for all of us. And Kurt, I'm also available to do this with you if ever you think you need it. I don't think you do, but um, navigating properly and looking in at our discussion and adding to uh, the discussion, it will be very, very helpful um, as we, we get your wisdom in this course. So the interaction we expect. One of the things about this week though, is that by Wednesday, and I'm saying this especially for those persons who will listen to the recording, 
by Wednesday of this week, day after tomorrow, we would want to see everyone coming in and introducing themselves. Some persons have been asking me, where do I upload the pictures? It is in that getting to know me section that you will place the one. I'm expecting to see something Andrew has designed and something Nathan made. Um, all of these wonderful things that um, you share that make us be inspired by how God is using you, as well as I would hope that you're going to be sharing in the discussion forum the challenges. Now, here is where I want to stop a little bit and speak to navigating properly. Each week, you have a list of things to do. A good thing to do is come Monday morning or Sunday midnight, get a glimpse of what are the activities for the week so that you have an idea of your workload. One of the things that I will be sending to you shortly is an alignment of your reading material with the weekly subject areas that we will be covering. That, I hope, will help you to choose what book you focus on. I've actually placed in each week a drop box for your book review. You will not be penalized if you do not do your book review each week. But you will certainly love me a lot if by week nine you have done them all. Because when you come to the end of week nine and you see that you have six or nine book reviews to do, plus your project, it could become a bit overwhelming if life starts to happen simultaneously. All right? So if you're a good reader, a fast reader, and all of those wonderful things that make us read, the book from the back to the front and the middle and then understand it and then write, do that. And um, I'm one of those avid note takers, so I have my notes relating to the books. And then afterwards, I put the book aside and I focus on the notes because that I have aligned to the expectation of the book review. The author's intent, how he structures the book, 100 words, 300 words, how I'm interacting with the book, what I'm disagreeing with, what I'm agreeing with, what I'm throwing out, what I'm taking in. And then lastly, the, 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 how it is affecting me and what changes I will make as a result of it. I think that's how I have it in my head. And when you begin to write concisely, you do it in the 500 words, no less, no more, or just a little margin in between. All right? So the book reviews will be there. This is the one course that does not ask you to journal because your entire response each week is a journal. I take you to the next very important point in this course. We've had two types of courses along the way. There is one where the preacher preaches. So the responses are perfect and they're perfectly aligned with scripture. But each question you are asking this course says, how do you or your. And when we begin to be honest in our wrestling with the you and the your, that's when this course comes alive. Because your own course mates will be identifying with, with you in ways 
that you're hearing many versions of your struggle and you're hearing many of the applications in terms of how they've been dealt with. I am inviting you not to give me the book preached report, but really give me your so that we can together grow out of each other's experience. That said, in any scholarly writing, you are expected to show how you're reading and the knowledge you're gaining from the material that you're being introduced to is impacting your work. So do not just give your personal opinion, but not show how your personal opinion is in fact influenced by or you are disagreeing with the opinion of those whom you read. That's when we know that the reading material is in fact making a difference to you. And so what we're trying to do as well as presenting you with recent material, presenting you with the authors of some of those materials so that you can really interact with them and give you an idea of which of the books will be related to the particular weeks so that you can at least peruse those before and be ready with your questions, right? We want you to introduce what you're learning in your discussion so that we have experience and scholarship working together to build us. Am I making sense? Hmm? Yes, Nobody yes. answering me. Yes, 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 Rachel, I see that you're back and I am going to pause and let you introduce yourself. I'm also honored to have my mentor and the um, person behind the personal assessment course Dr. Brad Smith with us. Um, I feel like I should just stop and say, okay, no, Brad, will you take over? But he, you see, he's shaking his head vehemently. Welcome both of you. I'm happy you came back on Marcel because I did miss you and I wasn't Thank quite you. sure if you've dropped, right? So Thank here you. is it that we're going to be um, giving you, okay, next week we're going to be having um, Belendrix and we're, I'm just using this as an example. We want you to read on um, his book, The Person Called You. We want you to be thinking about it. We want you to look at his video. We want you to begin to think about how it is affecting you so that you can use the honor of having the author with you in a real way, all right? Uh, regarding your group and your final project, and I'm just running these all down for you, um, the idea of the group project is really another opportunity for you to articulate to your group members your story in the format in which we've asked you or I wouldn't say format, but under the headings that we've asked you to consider them, right? And when you, you, you do that, we expect as group members, you will, you will be there keenly listening and also expressing what you're hearing so that whatever you, your feedback is, guided by a deep interest in what you're hearing and the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, you, you actually become an affirmation for the person who is telling the story. So again, this course is on two levels. It is an academic bit of paper you're doing, but it also a sole paper you're writing. 
and you're seeking and you're listening and you're understanding. You're even understanding yourself through understanding others, all right? So the group project is really a support project where at the end of the day, because you have supported each other in telling this story, you've helped each other to bring the story down to the main points, right? And write the book afterwards, that kind of stuff. Then each person will make their presentation um, with confidence and will move from the presentation into their final project. Please always be guided by the instructions in the syllabus. So I'm gonna ask each of you, if you have not yet done so, to read your syllabus and make notes of anything that you will need to, in particular, the delivery date for your final project and so on, all right? We'll be having a Zoom room every week. And I want to get feedback from you if the timing we choose isn't working for you. We can't please all participants, but we do our best to ensure that you can be here. And we will have the recording available for you as this one is being recorded. I've also posted for you a grading rubric, just so that you have an understanding of what is being looked for in your writing. And I encourage you uh, to stick to, and I'm doing this personally, do it the way you're asked to do it in the syllabus, because it's good practice. And the longer you stay away from doing it that way, is the harder it gets when you must do it that way. And in, in, in church, they would say, do I have a weakness? And I would put my hand up. Didn't want to know Turabian, and I didn't want to know APA, and I just wanted to just express myself. But there came a time when to do it the right way took a much longer time because I wasn't well rehearsed. So I'm going to encourage you not to fall on, on, on my, um, into my fate there. Uh, we talk about the the grading rubric, it is posted on the information page. Um, we will bring things to your attention from time to time. As I told you, you have these wonderful um, resource, which course has two board members and the president and so on chipping in and maybe looking at what you're writing, maybe adding a point or two but being in the Zoom room with you alternately or from time to time to share, to listen. So we will have panel discussions. We're going to have presentations um, from Bill Hendricks and from Rob Martin and from Brad Smith and from Dave Etage. And we are going to be able to interact with each of these authors and um, Kurt is going to bring a special flavor to the process. So you will be well fed. You have access to the throne. Make good use of it by being present in these sessions. You will be notified ahead of time. You will be asked in some instances to do some exercises. Um, for example, Rob Martin will review your, we call it your white paper, but your messaging document, which is saying, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. But he helps you to articulate that well, because Rob Martin, as he will be introduced by Brad, has done far more in terms of approving grants than anyone else we know. And so he is really a guru 
at you saying the right things at the right time. All right, so basically I have um, spoken about the expectations. I have spoken about the importance of you, your, your choosing your learning community and the pre-course survey. You are going to be reminded every week that you should be setting up your time with your learning community when we here at BGU will meet with them. We will help you to articulate and to help them to understand what you're doing and how they can play a role in, 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 in assisting you with what you're doing. And we know that very often learning community discussions that is done very well by my mentor lead other persons into becoming a part of the BGU family. All right? So um, begin to engage them, begin from the pre-course survey to discover a time when you can get them all together in one room and we're going to be giving you possible times and the sooner you nail that down, the better it is. But this is the course that puts you and your learning community into um, a symbiotic relationship that should last the lifetime, but it's really useful to coming to terms with who am I, what am I doing, how am I wired, what, what name is on my white stone, all of that, because they're seeing you and um, placing that mirror in front of you so that you can more clearly see yourself. What have I not spoken to Dr. Hurt? What have I not spoken to Dr. Brad? Is well, there um, anything? Yeah, one, one suggestion that I would have is as you are uh, going through your assignments, especially the book reviews, is uh, to be strategic about uh, how you do your book reviews. For example, I think most of you are in the DTL program. So, so uh, when you, if you've looked at, uh, if you've looked ahead and taken a look at the final project requirements and, and the format, you'll see that a couple of the sections uh, include the chapters on uh, review of literature and, and the context of what it is you're working on. So if you want to be forward looking, you could think in terms of your, your project and select books that, uh, that would help you on that project later on. Because uh, what, what you'll find when you start writing your project is that it becomes an all consuming thing uh, in your life. And those of us who've been there can, can attest to that. Uh, and and so, so if you look forward a bit, you, you might think about uh, books that are relevant to, to something that you're interested in that, uh, that, might, uh, that might help you later uh, as, you, as you flesh out your project. And, uh, and so uh, you, you can be strategic about, about the kind of uh, work that you do with your assignments. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Yvonne, I would like to say something concerning the book reviews. Um, and before you say something concerning the book review, Marcel, um, we've introduced ourselves and we've spoken a little bit about our expectation and our hobbies. And since you missed that, could you do that? Then you go into what you have to say. I hope you won't forget. No trouble at all. Um, first of all, my name is uh, Marcel Raymond Hudson. Um, I'm from the continent of South America, the country Guyana, the only English speaking country in the continent of South America. Currently, I function as the uh, secularly as the chief education officer in the Ministry of Education. Um, I'm also an evangelist in the local church. 
I have responsibility for children's ministry, and I've been doing that for over uh, 10 years now. Um, I have been responsible with the help of a team to raise up uh, an outstation, which will become an organized church shortly. Currently, it has like 130 persons. Um, we started there with a few benches and maybe 10 or 12 people. And so um, we now have a, a, a fledgling um, congregation, if you want to say that. I am in this course um, because I really want to get a sense of uh, God's direction as to where he wants to take me and how I could impact the secular, um, the secular, um, my secular job in terms of ministry and so on. I think I have, um, I, I could say I've been doing that with uh, some degree of success. Many of the, uh, particularly in relation to the um, eight perspectives of transformational leadership, I have included many uh, principles in meetings with my, uh, with our staff at the Ministry of Education. Some of them, they're actually beginning to sound as though they're Baki students because you know, the, the, um, of the discussions that we would have had and how we approach things and um, the whole concept of team and collaboration and so on. I, I had a very interesting, um, I've already done the, the uh, overture in Fresno. And I think with Dr. Randy, that, that was so powerful. And so here I am and I'm pressing on. I'm actually into... <laughs> Um, I've just completed the research methodology course and I'm into the part one of the dissertation because long before I entered Baki, I really wanted to do some work on literacy in our primary schools. Lots of children struggling, can't read. If they can't read, they can't progress and so on. So I'm actually looking at a collaborative approach to improving performance in literacy in primary schools. I've, I've taken one school. So I, I think I'm, I'm set. I think this course will contribute to, to the, the knowledge and information I need as I continue to start writing. And so um, I'm here. I'm, I've been married for 23 years to one wife, and I have one son. And so that's my story. I, Dr. Thank Brad, you, I think, that's how you done. Dr. Brad, I think I have submitted, uh, because when I read this survey, it, it said submit to, um, to, to Dr. Brad. And yes, I I sent that correction out. Um, I hope you got it, so you will redirect it, okay? It's, like it's, it's now on the arm. Um, it's now where it belongs, right? Now. Right. Uh, if, if you would permit me. Um, the, when I looked at the books that we ought to um, do the book reviews, I noticed five of those books, and I went ahead and procured those five books. So those five books are now in my possession. So I think it would be easy for me to proceed with doing um, the, book, the book reviews. But then subsequently, I recognized that um, um, three more books should be chosen from the, from the list in the syllabus. I also think I read somewhere that if you want to have um, other books included, you should consult with the professor. And so that's the question I really wanted to raise because I was going through a library and I found um, Stephen Covey. He has written Principle Centered Leadership. This is Covey. And then there is one by uh, case studies from Africa by um, a gentleman by the name of Stuart Snook. And he talks about developing leadership. Okay, too. Marcel, in the interest of time, um, can you just send us the list of the books though? Um, those that you would want to use as alternate because they are relevant to what you want to do. Different yes. students will have different books, right? So as okay. the literature suggests, just send them to, 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 to me in terms of what those books are. We will look at them very carefully and we'll give you feedback. Okay, All right? You. And I don't think you need to fear too much um that those books may may not be accepted we just need to know your trajectory what you're looking at and why those books are relevant to what you're doing okay all right um but certainly yes uh remember though that where you are doing eight book reports for the purpose of the course 
you must read what is it um 3000 there is right so there's still going to be books all right the eight will not very often make up that number right so like most of your other courses if there are four credits a lot easier um if there are more you will still need to be reading more and okay. show that you've read more right so that list if you find anything there as well that is useful to what you're and you already know what you're you're reading on then certainly um you could choose from them as well all right okay. but um it won't be possible for me to um authorize the book as you speak to them now Appreciate you will need to send them to us and we will look at that right are you okay with that yes yes you are yeah. all righty and i also want to welcome renee because i i'm sure i saw that renee had joined us um renee this is not her first course marcel did you do joy at work no i i did not do uh, joy at work uh all right um i i asked you for a particular reason but we'll talk about that um off off the air um, I actually just i actually read did some work with uh dr messiah or pastor yeah. messiah I was part of his PLC, so I have a concept of, right, you know, of the joy, joy at work. Okay. Welcome, Renee. Um, you're, you're muted, but could you just quickly give us an, your hobby, um, what you expect to get from this course? Um, we want to make it short. Um, unmute yourself, and then we will be able to hear you. Good, good night. Good evening, everyone. My internet was down, so I eventually come on very late. Sorry about that. My hobby, I have a hobby. Swimming. I've never really um, reflected and really want to normally play or, so I would say swimming. I like to go to the beach, although I cannot swim. Right. That's it. Uh, okay. What do you expect to get from this course? Renee is from Jamaica. Renee is a teacher. Um, I'm, I'm filling in a little bit more. Um, what but you are in personal expect. Yeah. What are your expectations? Right. For the personal assessment course i expect to develop myself both in learning the new techniques that i knowledge both in my school environment Basically, i'm doing this um doctoral study for personal development all righty thank you Renee. um I know you missed a bit, but the recording will assist you in filling in the blanks, right? And then you can, in fact, um, field questions as you go along. Dr. Yes. Smith, is there anything you want to add to our session this evening? Vaughn, you've got a great group here. So I think it'll be a lot of fun and I'm um, just excited to be able to sit in a little bit. And I think it'll be, you know, the core to what we do in our courses is peer learning. And at the end of the course, you may say I learned more from each other than I did from the professor or from the exercises. And we, our hope is that we create lifelong peer learning and that you make friendships here and peer learning that will last a lifetime. And so uh, at the end of this course, if you say the most enjoyable and most um, the people that helped me the most were fellow peers that's what we'd like Kurt you've heard your students you've heard what they have to say are you still with me I still am 
Okay. Any any last word? Any anything you'd like to say to all of us? To be, to be transformed, obviously, you need to know who you are and where you are at the moment. Even if you've done work like this in the past, putting yourself in the opportunity to let God's Spirit take another good look at you through whatever assessment tool. And as Brad was saying, just being around other people, when two or three are gathered us gathered in the name of Jesus, just some powerful things can happen with the intention that we are looking at how God designed us and made us. That is the transforma transformative power that leads us into all other things. So no matter where we are, uh, whether you're here auditing, master's, doctorate, going through this process each time, Will continue to open up further in his will so it's a very exciting time thank you so much and for those of you who missed it when i introduced kurt and i introduced dave i was actually introducing you to our board members who have taken the time out just to be a part of this process with us to guide us along to optimize the benefits we get from this course and and brothers kindly ask them to join and i have been you know tugging at their sleeve but i'm sure they responded to the greater the greater force of the president asking them along but we're very happy to have them and i'm inviting you to make good use of their expertise i'm going to leave dave to close us out for this evening just to let me ask before he does so, is there anyone who has any burning question? Any question that you are, something you're not sure of, something you want to, Renee, I see your finger, does that mean you? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Really, um, read the personal learning committee because I've selected my personal learning committee person from 2014. I contacted them, but they said that they are not be able, able to assist me at this moment. I'm trying to reach out to person, but not getting through to person will really make the time out to assist me. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And I can meet with you off the record just to talk a little bit sure. more and share from my own experience how I have used various persons. And maybe I should share it publicly. On my personal learning community were encouragers. Persons who were just saying, Yvonne, how are you going along? Some of them didn't even know they were, right? How are you getting along? Where have you reached? How can I help you? There were those who knew nothing about academics, but they were on their knees for me because they saw and understood what this would do for the greater good, right? There were persons who taught me or who are in academia who I could rely on to say this grammar is just totally, what is it you want to say? Because whatever you want to say, you haven't said it. And that is a needed part of whatever you are doing here at BG or in any learning environment somebody to read what you're saying and say i don't get it or this grammar is wrong or something right and then you need somebody who probably is just interested in walking alongside you and i am learning with you and this is interesting at the end of it they too may want to become a bgu student all right somebody was saying renee this is who i see you as this is something that you may need to work on. These are your strengths. These are your limitations. In your life, you have these persons around you. Sometimes you have to just think hard about them, um, talk to them about what it is you want from them. Not scare them because you tell them you're doing a doctorate. Oh, no, I have nothing to do with that right now but it is available, it is around you, it is a necessity, and you're going to dig deep, and with God's grace, you're going to get them. All right? Okay. So begin the journey. And as I said earlier, 
for the pre-course survey, if you have already read what is required, you're beginning to see the persons who won't fit because they cannot be contained and restricted to those questions and answered, and those who are listeners. The one thing that your personal community should not be is those who say what you want them to say. Okay. All right? It's not an agreement party. It's not a patriotic party. It's really people who are going to be working to bring out the best in them. All right? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we pray with you to that end. And you may have your personal learning community grow, shrink, or change as you evolve. All right? They're not written in tablets of stone that they cannot be changed. Yes, All right? Remember yes, again, persons must by Wednesday introduce themselves, pay attention to the deadline out of respect for others. If you post your discussion response on Sunday evening, you haven't given any of your teammates a chance to grow from you or to respond to you, all right? Again, if there are difficulties, if there are challenges, let us communicate, let us pray for each other, let us be able to know that something is happening and this is why you're not present, all right? So we're dealing with the two levels, respect, community, and family, yes, all right? Uh, Dr. Dave, what is your last word to me, to the group, um, to all of us, and can you pray us out, please? Uh, first of all, are there any more questions? Uh, Andrew, you had something. Did you have a question? Do you have, Yvonne, do you have um, next week's Zoom room scheduled already? Yes, I do. And I will be sending it out as soon as, and not just next week. I'm going to be sending you out. I think right now I, I was holding it back for one reason that was released today. So I can send you schedule all the way out to week five, six. Okay. Do you know what day we're doing next week? All right. Let me just quickly get that for you. Uh, just because I'm going to be in Wisconsin with Dave and Nathan. So uh, um, yes, all three of us might not be available. Oh, okay, okay. And three, three of you in this whole thing is kind of plenty. So let's see who we have on next week. And um, I think, Brad, is it you on next week? I think it is. Let me look very quickly. Andrew, we, we will probably be back, and if we need to, we can we can uh, do it Monday evening. It might be a bit challenging, but it, it could uh, kind of be fun to be together and do it. Yeah. Allow me, allow me to just get out of here and, and go to my other list and get it for you in a you little while. You got me at 6, 6 p.m. my time uh, mm -hmm. on the 16th, so that would be me. Right. Um, yeah. So, oh so, so good. This we will great. definitely be back for that then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please you can, do. You can hassle me. That's, I understand that. Yeah. Please, please That's do. Okay. I can handle it. <laughs> and, and also, and also your pre-reading. So while you're all three together, notice we will be looking at um, culture. Mm. Culture makers. Conformers, lots to read on there. So get ready for get get ready for 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 Dr. Brad next week Tuesday at six. So what what book should we be reading? I will be giving you that. This is what I promise you that as soon as I leave here, I will be giving you the books for each week. Okay. Probably culture culture making is going to be probably the most important for that that session. Mm -hmm. So.
some of them you can actually align them because of the subject area but i'm going to give you all the weeks um subjects we're covering the books and i will be throwing in from time to time some articles that are a little bit more updated than the books just so as to be teasers for your discussions all right Anything else? Nope. Um, Everybody Dr. happy? Dr. McKenzie, mm -hmm. I heard you said six o'clock. Is it Jamaica time, six o'clock? Uh, no, seven, um, no. You, 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 when we say Eastern Standard Time, you will recognize that Jamaica is not an Eastern, so we are on, we're, it, it is going to be an hour earlier for us. All right. I keep on mixing up with time. So it's going yes, to be a so I, all right. Let me tell you what, Renee. Let me write you and tell you the time and show you how to do the time conversion on Google. All right. So, McKin uh, Devon, you're at the same time as me right now. Is that right? I am at 7 30. And yes, I'm at 7 30 now. So, I think you've but got it scheduled. It's going to gonna be 8 30. So, what I have is 6 o'clock next Monday. July the 16th, which would be Dallas and Jamaica time, 16th. Right. So it will be 6 for you, Rennie. When you see 7 Eastern, it's 6 for you until daylight saving time stops. Even, even if I keep on still mixing up the time, even if I'm away. So that's why I normally would double check. That's why I mix up the time this evening. So I'm just, even if I know how to Google, I keep on mixing up the time. Thanks for that, um, Dr. Simon. All right. Hope you will stop mixing up the time soon. All right. Okay. Uh, over to you, Dave. Okay. Let's let's pray together. Um, Father, I I just sense a a uh, a sense of the sacred and the holy when we get a chance to take a look at your work in our lives, and this is what this course is about, and we recognize that it's an amazing privilege uh, to be in a learning environment like this to have you know fellow learners from all over the world and father we we approach this course um I, I think with a healthy amount of fear and trepidation as well as excitement because your fingerprints are all over our lives um, fearfully wonderfully made before we were born and i simply pray holy spirit that you would um, just enlighten us, show us how you've worked in the up times, the down times, the struggle times, and, and nothing that has happened has been an accident. And this is just a great opportunity to, to just give you thanks and praise and glory uh, for the work that you've done and, and what you're calling us to. So we just invite you to, to open us up, open our hearts, help us to be uh, vulnerable, uh, truthful, and thankful through this entire process. Um, it is just so life changing to, to be walking with you and we are just eternally grateful the work that you have done, are doing and will do. Uh, and we just praise you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Each of you for joining us. This first zoom room. And we look forward to next week and the other exciting weeks ahead. Damaris, please feel free to drop me a line and we can do some one-on-one -on -one time if you think you need any help navigating and Thank so you, on. Um, Renee, I would not mind having a little chat with you. Um, once we're through should you have the time and uh i'm just so happy that you've all attended for those who have not yet um joined us uh as soon as we get into the groups and so on then i will ask you to help the other person in the event they're missing something the recording will be posted and uh have a happy week in personal assessment this week. God bless you. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, Renee, by Renee, will you stay on? I need a key gun. Yes, I will. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. All right. To leave the meeting, there is usually a little red leave meeting at your bottom right. So you click on it to leave. Alrighty. And let me stop the recording and stop the sharing just now.